Well, good evening, good evening to all pro wrestling fans from all around the world of all shapes and sizes. Welcome to another pro wrestling talk video brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the Tube. I am your host, Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. So, wanted to get on here and do a quick review of Ice Ribbon's October Ice Ribbon Fest 2024 that just took place earlier today. Um, wanted to review the, the show and also uh, talk about something that was brought to my attention that kind of has me a little concerned. Okay, maybe even more than a little concerned. But before we get started, I want to remind everybody to be sure to check out Game Beauty. The link is in the description. If you want to check out some awesome video game themed makeup and cosmetic products. And if you have plans to make any purchases, don't forget to use the promo code BLITZBALL underscore CHAMP, all in caps, for 10% off of your order. So, nice little discount, but hey, every little bit counts. So, happy shopping. Okay, October Ice Ribbon Fest 2024 took place earlier today, uh, October 19th, at Corquin Hall. Uh, we had six total matches, and three of them uh, were title matches. So let's go ahead and jump right on in to the review, starting with match number one. All right, match number one, we had a tag team match. Team number one, we had Soy and Kirari Wakana taking on team number two, made up of Miria Kuga and Miku Kanai. Uh, one, thing, one thing's for sure, this match was loaded with tons of chops, tons of body slams, and tons of drop kicks. This match had plenty of them. Tons of them. Um, decent match, but I did kind of notice later on in the match that the pacing started to slow down, and it kind of looked like the ladies were, were trying to, like, reposition themselves a lot and kind of go to the next spot. So it kind of it kind of slowed down the pace quite a bit. But, um, I mean, it is what it is. And to be honest with you, I did not expect this match to go to a time limit draw. And it went to a time limit draw. I don't know too many occasions where I've seen a match, especially an ice ribbon, where the very first match ends in a time limit draw. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I typically don't see see that happen much. So, thought it was kind of interesting. But yeah, this ended in a time limit draw. And, you know, Kirari Wakana and Miku Kanai kind of brawled a little bit more after the match. Um, which I have to say, Miku Kanai hit a really nice uh, Swanton Bomb off the top turnbuckle I thought was really good. But um, overall, pretty decent back and forth match, but yeah, ended in a time limit draw. So I don't know if they're going to have some sort of follow up after that, but I guess we'll have to wait and see uh, for the future shows. But yeah, time limit draw in match number one. Alrighty. Let's move on to the second match. So we go from tag team match to trios. All right, had a trios match. Team number one is made up of Tsukina Umino, Mio Shirai, and Nane Furukawa. And they took on the trio of Yuko Sakurai, Miki Fortune, and Arisa Shinose. Um, I have to say, I really like the, what was that? Oh, I have to say, I really like the, the color scheme, uh, that team number one was, was really working with. I thought that was actually really cool, uh, with the, with the darker colors, you know, with the purples and the blacks. So, thought that was really cool. Um, I like both teams. Uh, this was my first time seeing Mickey Fortune. 
So, uh, definitely like what I saw. And you had quite some good chemistry with that second team with Mickey Fortune, Yuko Sakura, and Arisa Shinose. I was actually pretty surpri surprised. Um, Mio Shirai <laughs> ran her mouth quite a lot. Uh, in this match. Like, I thought it was actually pretty funny. But, um, overall, pretty decent match. Uh, definitely enjoyed it from start to finish. But, uh, surprisingly, the finish, I did not expect. But, uh, Arisa Shinose picked up the victory for her team. She pretty much hit Nane Furukawa with, a, with an AA, with an attitude adjustment. And then, uh, pinned her for the 1-2-3. So yeah, Arisa Shinose, Yuko Sakurai, and Mickey Fortune, your winners. Like I said, I did not expect her to, to pick up the victory for, for her team. So, hey, nice. Because, I don't know, normally don't see Arisa Shinose pin anybody, or at least not to my knowledge. I mean, maybe y'all have on some, you know, dojo shows or whatnot, or shows that I haven't seen, but... That, I would have to say that's probably my first time seeing her pin somebody. Um, she has before. I sure don't remember. But still, decent match. Happy for her. Happy for her. All right. Now we're about to go into our very first title match of the show. All right, we had the Triangle Ribbon Championship on the line. As the champion, Kuri, defended against Mifu Ashida and Tomato Kaiji. Um, <laughs> that Tomato Kaiji, that, that dude. <laughs> did not, I, I, mm, I did not expect that at all, but, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, was the, the male wrestler in, in this match. But I mean, hey, it was, it was entertaining. It was definitely entertaining. This match was very entertaining. Um, I thought it was kind of funny at the start, you know, with all three of them doing the test of strength. And then Curry was like, okay, y'all lock, lock hands, y'all do it. And then both of them attacked her at the same time. So, uh, but yeah, it was it was a pretty entertaining match. Even Kerry busted out the, the the cooling spray, so I thought that was pretty funny. Um, I mean, not really a whole lot of crazy special spots or anything happened in this match, but I mean, for the most part, you know, it was just pretty entertaining. I felt like all three competitors looked good, so... I mean, I, re I really can't, I really can't complain. I, re I really can't complain, to be honest with you. But, Kiri was able to pick up the victory. Uh, she pinned Mifu Ashida with the cutie special uh, to retain the Triangle Ribbon Championship. So, uh, successful defense for Kiri. But yeah, overall, good match. You know, can't say anything bad about it, to be honest with you. So, hey, good stuff. Alrighty. Let's go to our next match. We had one more trios match, and this was a very entertaining trios match. Alright, we we got to see the big girls showcase. This this was a this was a lot of fun. So, trios match. Team number one, we had Grizzly Food Fujitaki, Manami Katsu, and Yapi, and they took on the trio of Totoro, Satsuki, Yuna Manase, and Yuzuki. I thought it was a pretty, pretty funny start to the match, seeing the ladies cause an earthquake in the ring and then just started trading shoulder tackles. Like, this, this was a very entertaining match. Uh, definitely enjoyed it from start to finish. All six ladies did excellent, um, and just very well showcased. I mean, you know, got to see a good amount of action inside the ring and also outside the ring, and just everybody looked great. 
everybody looked great and just I, I like the way they I like the way they did this match. Just, you know, to showcase, you know, the, the big girls, you know, the bigger talent and you know the more, you know, strength orient strength oriented, power oriented ladies. So hey, I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. And like I said, there's specific ladies in this group I like. Like I like Yappy, I like Totoro Satsuki, I like Yuna Manase. So, you know, I thought everybody did well. Yuzuki, who was just recently in the Six Shrew Tournament and Sendai Girls. But yeah, definitely liked how everybody did in this match. And uh, Manami Katsu actually got the pen on Totoro. Uh, hit a very nice diving elbow drop off the turnbuckle. I was like, oh, snap. She, she pulled off a little little Kyrie Sane there with that elbow drop. But yeah, nicely executed diving elbow drop. And then pin Totoro for the one, two, three. So, Yappy, Manami Katsu, and Grizzly Fujitaki are your winners. But yeah, I enjoyed the mess out of that match. Um, definitely one of my favorites on the card. So, very well done, ladies. Okay, back to some championship matches. All right. The semifinal. Here you go. All right, we had the International Ribbon Tag Team Championships on the line. As the champions, Makoto and Hamuko Hoshi, defended against the team of Yumi Oka and Saran. Uh, this was a very exciting match. And I have to say, really good chemistry uh, with Saran and Yumi Oka. I thought they did really well and... Saron had so many close calls. I mean, so many close pinfalls and whatnot. Like, I felt like they did a good job trying to keep Makoto isolated from Hamuko Hoshi, at least for a while, you know, middle of the match to near the end. And like I said, Yuma Oka, Yumi Oka and Saron, they, they looked really good together in this match. I thought they did a really good job. Um... Of course, Makoto, Hamuko, Hoshi, you know, been a pretty strong team, you know, especially to be the, the tag champs. But, yeah, this match definitely went the distance and uh, definitely enjoyed it from start to finish. But as close as Seron was, just wasn't quite able to pull it off as Hamuko was able to eventually hit a beautiful diving splash off the top turnbuckle onto Saron. Count of one, two, three. Hamuko Hoshi picking up the victory. Her and Makoto, still your international ribbon tag team champions. But great match, great title defense, um, which Mio Shirai uh, refed this match. She actually ref two matches. Uh, during the show. So, yeah, had a busy night for her. She competed in a match and she ref two matches. So, hey, right on. And then the main event of October Ice Ribbon Fest 2024, we had the Ice Cross Infinity Championship on the line. As the champion, Yuri. Defended against Yuki Mashiro. Of course, we know that Yuki Mashiro is a former uh, Triangle Ribbon champion herself. Um, solid match. Definitely a solid match. I felt like the momentum went back and forth. I know Yuri had a good, decent chunk of momentum throughout this match, but then Yuki Mashiro was able to really just channel her fighting spirit to really stay in the match. I mean, Yuri like leveled her with a lot of moves, a lot of submissions as well, really stayed on her, but Yuki Mashiro, that fighting spirit on full display for this match, uh, definitely showed how this match was main event worthy. Um, went the distance, but I think once Yuri missed the, uh, the Swanton Bomb, that pretty much left Yuki Mashiro with much of the opening she needed. And it was a matter of time, but she was able to 
hit kind of a flipping crucifix, almost kind of like the Quizzo Cult, kind of like how um, Saki Akai used to use um, when she was wrestling. But yeah, she hit that, pinned Yuri for the one, two, three. And ladies and gentlemen, Yuki Mashiro is your new Ice Cross Infinity Champion. So congratulations to her. Uh, very well done. Great main event. But uh, yeah, Yuki Mashiro, which I believe this is the first time she's won this title, if I remember correctly. I believe this is her first title run with the, the Ice Cross Infinity Championship. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, great match. Uh, definitely enjoyed it. Uh, overall, pretty good show. Now, on, on an unfortunate sour note, I noticed as I was watching the show, like when I first, you know, about, you know, that first, those first two matches, I, I just happened to notice, I was like, wait a minute, we, we are in Corquin Hall, right? Because I saw a pretty decent number of first row and a bunch of second row ringside seats empty. And, you know, they kind of, you know, got went out into the crowd, you know, a little later in the match. But, yeah, there were plenty of empty seats. And apparently um, one of the folks in a, a wrestling discord I'm in apparently told me that this show only had 312 fans in attendance. Yikes. That's a bummer. Only 312 fans in attendance for this show? Ugh. Ah, uh, that's that's kind of a bummer because you know, I'm I'm going to the to the Ribbon Mania show on December thirty first. Um, I'll be there in attendance for that, and I'm first row for that show, and it's just like, dang. And that's also at uh Corquin Hall, but dang, if they only attracted three hundred twelve fans for the show, ugh. It's kind of a bummer, but I'm also hearing that the word is that Ice Ribbon, as well as some other, I guess, other organizations or whatnot, or other um, companies under the same umbrella, apparently they're having financial issues. Apparently they're having financial issues. Um... I, it's kind of a bummer. I, I mean, I hope everything, I hope everything is, is okay. So apparently, apparently Neo Plus, Neo Plus, um, I guess runs, uh, Ice Ribbon. But, and I think word is that, I believe the owner, uh, I think we, who I believe is Hajime Sato, I th word is, is that he's ill or whatnot. But at the same time, I hear that not a lot of the wrestlers like him. So, not only that, uh, also hearing that a lot of the wrestlers aren't getting paid or at least not getting paid on time or whatnot but yeah apparently they're having some financial issues and so apparently I'm being told that you know Hajime Sato is ill and that Neo Plus pretty much has to pay out of their pockets. Ugh. Well, I don't know, y'all. I was actually kind of thinking, could Ice Ribbon eventually merge or get bought?
Because, I mean, we know that it's, it was originally founded by um, Emi Sakura back in 06. But, um... Man. Well, whatever financial issues they're having, I hope they're able to recover as soon as possible. And... Oh! Actually... I'm just now seeing this. So apparently Ice Ribbon got acquired by manage by the management company Rebellions uh, December uh, last year, actually. December 12th of 2023, Ice Ribbon acquired by Rebellions Company. I'm not familiar with them. But... Hmm. Well... I guess we'll have to see what happens, but I, I hope nothing happens to the point where they get shut down. You know, because like I said, I'm I'm going to the to the Ribbon Mania show, their last show of the year. I'm going to that show, so you know, definitely want to want to support, but hope everything works out for them. Because I mean, I do like the promotion. I've enjoyed what I've seen. As far as shows that I've seen from the promotion, so hope everything works out. That's all I can say. But anyway, that'll do it uh, for this review. Um, don't forget to check out Game Beauty, and also let me know what your thoughts were. Did you get a chance to see this show? What did you think? Um, even despite the low attendance numbers, uh, let me know what your thoughts were of this show. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. For another Pro Wrestling Talk brought to you by Blitzball Champ Gaming here on the U to the 2, my name is Blitzball Champ Jason Ingram. Hope everybody continues to have a blessed weekend, and I will see y'all in the next video and or live stream. Laters.